Hello, Snack Pack. Welcome back to Channel Snacks. Uh, or if this is your first time, welcome to the channel and to the live stream. My name is Allison, and this is Travel Snacks. Travel Snacks is all about traveling, eating good food, being kind to one another, using all the resources that you have available to you, and maybe living a lifestyle outside of the norm, whether you want to live in a car, a van, a truck, a tiny home, a tent, you know, just a little bit different than what society deems normal. So we're all here for it and we welcome you if this is your first time. And I welcome you just if you've been here all the time. Go put my glasses on so I can see. Now I don't know what's going on with whoa, with this, but my chat window is like the most tiny right now. So I'll just do my best. Okay, so hey, Brooklyn Zone One's in the house. AGT's in the house. Hey, Robbie. Uh, hey, Tracy. Um, hey, OG Grant's in the house. Uh, Grant and AGT are our moderators, and they do a fantastic job. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, hey, Linda Lover, and let's see, Thomas is in the house from Northern New York State. And Anthony's in the house. Anthony's been sending me some really encouraging messages. So thank you very much for that. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see who else, who else, who else, who else. Tammy's in the house and Freya's in the house. Thank you guys so much for being here. And thank you, Tammy, for your continued support because I've been getting your uh, donations and I appreciate that very much. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Jane's in the house from Ohio. A Kenneth is in the house and Adrian's in the house. Brenda, Bob, hey, 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 hey. And uh, Rick's Gypsy, uh, Anita from Chicago. Awesome, Terry Tenacious. Rebecca's in the house. Deb R from Ontario, Canada. Gerald, Susan Cox from Florida. Awesome, okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. I don't know what is going on with this, but. I don't know. There's like a bunch of little like glitchy things with this uh, melon. You know, I I like it. I like the the app and everything. Melon is the uh, the app that I use to live stream from, so I can go live directly from YouTube, which is fine and it works well until you want to have guests and then you have to use like an outside service like Melon or Streamyard. I'm trying to get adjusted here. It's crazy. And Melon was less expensive than Streamyard. Um, but it seems like there's just like a little bit of glitch here, glitch there. And I'm just kind of like starting to get to this point where I'm like, okay, is it going to be worth it to keep this? We'll see. We'll see. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, yeah, before we get, before we get it popping, we got a lot going on today. Before we get it popping, throw a like on this live stream. So YouTube knows you love the live streams. Also, if you're brand new, if, if, if you're not even subscribed and you're not part of the snack pack, you're going to want to do that. You're going to want to subscribe and hit the notification bell and become part of the family. It's, it's a great, it's a great time and everybody's super welcoming and loving. So it's just nice. And also if you'd like to make a donation, you can certainly do so by the cash app or Venmo or hitting the little dollar sign under the chat. And that's a super chat and every donation gets a shout out. So let's get it popping. we got a lot to go over today. Okay, so um, it's hot where I'm at. It's hot. I'm sweaty. It's, it's, I'm hot and sweaty. And I just took my shower today. So I have my fan going. I have my fan, my Max Air fan going. It's actually a beautiful day out. And I was trying, I'm at a park and I was trying to, I was walking around before this started to see if I could find like a table and bench seat chair things that I could do this live stream from. There's benches, but there's no table for me to set this iPad on. So I don't know. So maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll go out of the van and, and show you guys around. But for now, there's nowhere for me to set this iPad up. Anyways, um, I was in, there's a little bunny. There's a little bunny rabbit outside. <laughs> I was in Colorado. I've been in Colorado for a few weeks and I... I'm kind of waiting around for my friend Adriana who was in Uruguay. She finally just got back 
And we had planned on traveling to some of the mountain states together, like, and go to Yellowstone and all these places. Uh, so she finally got back. Uh, and so we're going to coordinate getting together. But in the meantime, <clears throat> excuse me, since I had some time before we meet up, um, I decided to go somewhere I've never been before. And I'm currently in Nebraska. I've never, I've never been here. I never knew anything about Nebraska. But I drove into Nebraska last night. Um, and also on my way in, part of Nebraska is on mountain time and part of it's on central time. So I crossed over into central time. So that threw me off. And like, I slept in so late today. And I woke up and I was like, what the heck? I never sleep in this late. And then I realized that I had lost an hour. So it was just weird. I'm still all jacked up. Um, so yeah, Nebraska, I am in a place called Kearney, Nebraska, which is kind of th think like more so in like the center of Nebraska. And <clears throat> what's funny is one of my friends, she used to live in New York and she moved to Nebraska. And so I was like, Ooh, I can go visit my friend. So she's in the Omaha area. So I'm going to be going to see her tomorrow, which is great because Saturdays I usually like to take off, uh, and just like chill out and it'll be a great day. So I'll probably stay in Nebraska for, you know, a week ish, maybe a little bit more, maybe hit a little bit of Kansas. Uh, and then I'm going to meet my friend back in Colorado in a few weeks. So that's basically where I'm at right now. So is it hot? Is it getting hot where you guys are? Cause I know a lot of you guys are in States that have been really cold. It's finally warm. Now, you know, I like the cold more than the hot when I live in this van because even though I have the AC and everything, it's just a lot. Um, I had my zero breeze AC going today because it was pretty hot in here. But other than that, can't complain. Okay, let's see. So I'm scrolling through the chat and it's like this big, even with my glasses on. So let me close this out and I wonder how I can open this back up. No, I don't need that. Let me just zoom, zoom in. Awesome, awesome. Is that starry background supposed to be there? Uh, I added that starry background. Um, I can make the screen bigger. Uh, for you guys to see i just did that right now they have all these little different you know different ways that you can show it uh thank you grant for posting that and hey hope franklin's in the house grant's all excited for the field trip uh tracy says "Ooh, nebraska that's interesting yes 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 uh thomas says lots of mosquitoes and black flies oh no i don't like i don't like that terry says when you come up north come through washington maybe terry i might we'll, we'll see we'll see um, AG, fun fact, Nebraska state bird is a Western meadow lark. I small yellow, a small yellow birdie. Oh, interesting. I did not know that. I don't know anything about Nebraska. I uh, hope it's not your fault, probably because I've been changing the times on these live streams just to, it's, <laughs> I'm trying to accommodate more people and also invite new people um, to the snack pack. So I've been just trying out new things. So it's not your fault, but that's a good reason why everybody should have the notifications on because then you'll know like when I go live, it's, it's going to send you out a message saying go in live. Um, but yeah, so this week it's an hour earlier than last week. Uh, it was, you know, I kind of felt bad for the East coast people because it was starting at nine and I was like, that's, that's a little late, you know, that's a little late. Um, hey, Sammy. Good evening, Eo, and nice star border back on. Cool. Thank you. It's getting warm in Texas. Oh, I bet. Oh, Rebecca's getting into the 90s. In Iowa, it was a beautiful 79. Ooh, that sounds great. Um, cool. Never been to New York yet. New York's great. Awesome. Hey, Grant Pearson. It's warm too hot here in Ohio, plus the management of my apartment building didn't turn off the heat until yesterday. Ay, ay, ay. Nebraska has an amazing crane festival when the birds migrate. Ooh, that sounds cool. 
Hey, Haley. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so where's my pen? I'm gonna mark off the things that I talk about. Uh, okay, I told you I'm in Nebraska. This little bunny is just eating. I don't know if I can turn the, there's gotta be a way to turn this around to make it easy to show you guys. I'm gonna make a couple notes here so I can write to this melon. Turn camera, small chat, Uh, you're welcome, Thomas. Uh, awesome, awesome. Haley says, have you ever had anyone try to break into your vehicle? The other night, a group of 20-somethings tried to break into my SUV while I was sleeping at like 1 a.m. Good thing I was able to get away unharmed. That is frightening. I have not had anybody try to break into my van that I know of. Definitely not when I'm in it. Um, but I've been in situations a couple times where I started to feel a little, little off. Um, and I ended up driving away. Uh, something recent ha something happened recently that was very, I don't want to say traumatic because that's overreaching, but it was upsetting and I'm not even wanting to talk about it at this point yet. Um, I'll probably will later in a future video or episode or live stream. Um, but yeah, you, you never know. Like you, you have to try to be aware of your surroundings, but sometimes you can be in like a, a decent area and if the wrong person comes by and they just have bad intentions, it could be bad. So um, it's definitely prompted me to think more about uh, my weapon setup <laughs> and the way that I have things, you know, like if I had to do something in a pinch. So it's something that's I've been pondering lately, but I'm sorry that happened to you. Tracy said it's 63 with showers here, cold and gray. Ooh, I love cold and gray. Grant says, come and experience the boat life. I get seasick, so that's probably not going to be the best for me. Uh, Ken, this is Oklahoma. AGD, fun fact, Kool-Aid was invented in Nebraska by Edward Perkins. I heard of that, and there was actually a Kool-Aid, like, museum um, that I heard of. Uh, Haley says, can you maybe talk about how you scope out places to park? I know you've made a video about it a while ago. So, I'd say... 95% of the time I have been parking in mid-level hotel parking lots like Marriott, Comfort Inn, Holiday Inn, um, Homewood Suites, Hampton Inn, uh, almost every night. So I, I look it up on my phone. I, I go on Google, Google Maps. I type in or I just hit the button that says hotels and then I put on the filter that says free parking. And then I find all the hotels that have free parking and I look at their reviews and like kind of make sure that it's in a decent area. And then I just wait until like 10 o'clock and then I go park in the parking lot as long as there's a lot of spaces available. If there's not a lot of spaces, I'll find another space. I'll find another place to park. But I'd say the majority of the time I'm parking in a hotel parking lot. And if I'm not doing that, I'm parking in a residential area that uh, for the most part, I've had decent results with that. But there have been a few times where residents did not like that, especially because of my California plates. Um, I've also parked in Cracker Barrel, a casino. Um, I haven't done a hospital yet, but I almost was going to be parking in a hospital parking lot because I couldn't find a place. Um, I've parked just on the curb in like a, like a, not a construction area, but like a industrial area. Um, Yeah, I haven't really dipped my toe into the national forest or the uh, BLM land type situations yet. That's something I'm going to be working towards. I feel like I need to get, I don't feel like I need to, I need to get a better, um, wh uh, what is it called? Like a, a booster for cell service, for internet, uh, before I start going out because Verizon's great when you're in like a populated area, but once you start getting into places that are a little more rural, maybe not as great. So I do need to get some sort of a booster. So when I do that, then I'll probably be out a little bit further, you know, but the problem is right now is like, I work a lot like editing videos and filming content and, and now I'm doing this new podcast and stuff. 
So I have to have a, a good, strong connection. And so far, when I go further out, it hasn't really been the greatest. So that was kind of a long-winded answer. So hopefully that helps. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, Cameron, how are you? Uh, Lunda Lover, that's Karen. It's, it's 75 degrees in northern Colorado. Very nice. Ooh. Terry says, Kool-Aid's my favorite sugar-free. Jane says, cast iron skillet, great for cooking and great weapon for self-defense. Ooh, that's a good one. That's going to ring someone's bell. Um, someone told me recently that they were in the car when they heard someone starting to cut off their catalytic converter. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. That would be frightening because I wouldn't want to get out. But also, I'd be like, bro, don't, don't mess with me. Um, yes, you have to do safety first. Take care of you for sure. Uh, has anyone added an oil catch to their Prius? I just bought a 2007 Prius Touring. If so, has it helped? Uh, hopefully somebody in these comments can help you because I haven't done that. Uh, hey, Adriana, many roads, no rules. Uh, everybody welcome Adriana back to the States because she's been in Uruguay for a while. And also go check out her channel because it's awesome. Um, I want to make a little side note uh, and, and just put this, you know, take it or leave it. I'm just going to say take it or leave it. But during this time uh, of the year when people are like getting out and enjoying and stuff, uh, content creators, their their views are going way down. My views have been going down. Every content creator that I know, all their views are going down. And people that do this for a living, that means that your money goes down. <laughs> so I say if you have a moment at night and you don't have anything else to do, or in the morning when you're drinking your coffee, just pop on somebody's YouTube channel. It doesn't have to be mine, but I'm just saying that because I've been talking to a lot of creators that depend on YouTube, um, you know, for their livelihood. Um, and I never tell anybody like, you know, do this because you got to help people out. I'm just saying, if you have nothing else better to do, um, put on a YouTube, you know, because it really does help creators to keep going and making these great, this great content. And also at the same time, I'm really proud of people getting out of their houses and going and exploring and stuff like that. So, you know, don't miss out on getting some fresh air because of that. But I just wanted to kind of like bring that up because I've been hearing so many creators saying, oh my gosh, like, you know, my views are so down. I don't know what to do, you know? And I'm like, well, we all have to have faith, including myself that, you know, it's going to pick back up. At first I was like, dang, I guess people don't like me no more. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not personal. So I'm not worried about it. But at the same time, if you if you think about it, put on a YouTube video. Um, maybe a small spot LED light on outside of your van, just an idea. Yeah, that's good. But at the same time, Sammy, you don't really want to call attention to yourself in terms of like, you know, if I'm parking in like a neighborhood or, you know, in a hotel, I don't want people to know that I'm in there or like, you know, um, Cameron says our casino parking lots, garages, good spots for overnight. Um, I've only done it one time and it was great. Um, but that casino specifically had a, like a, um, a parking lot, like a split level. Hey, D Jackson, welcome to the snack pack. Um, they had a, like the parking garage and the clearance was too, too low for me. This was not the one in Vegas. This was another, I forget where I was somewhere in, in the States. I don't even know where I was. Um, but they also had a dirt lot on the side for like bigger vehicles. So I ended up parking there and it was no problem at all. Um, but usually if you're going to go to a casino, make sure that you get out of your vehicle, go in, buy a soda or play a couple slots or whatever, because they have security. Like they literally have people like with, like looking at the cameras on the outside of the casino and on the inside and the parking garages, they're not, they're literally watching everybody. That's their job. So definitely go in, you know, play, and then you can go back to your vehicle uh, and give that a try. Nebraska is also known as the Cornhusker State, but that's facts. Uh, that's where I was parked when my incident happened. I was at a Cracker Barrel. It wasn't the first time I had parked there, so I'm wondering if they noticed me before and planned it. Ooh, that's interesting and scary. Um, Hallie says, I've parked at Trailheads before and I've had good experience with that. Oh, yeah, me too. Trailheads are a good one as well. Um, lots of crime all over the States up this year. That's also true. Um, I'm loving my pine forest right now and great cell signal national forest at 6,000 feet. Awesome. I saw pictures. It's beautiful. Ken says, I've always seen you as wise when it comes to laws and safety. 
I try. Hey, Wilderbrook. I use a Solus light for cell reception. It's been fabulous for being really, uh, I've heard mixed reviews on that. So that's interesting. I'm glad to hear about that. Um, yeah, Hope says uh, don't park in the same place a lot. And that's a good, very good tip. Um, I have heard some, I'm not saying Haley, you have, but I'm saying I've heard of some nomads, you know, staying in the same spot for like a few days. I never do that. I'd say like, Every night I have a new spot, every night. There's only been very rare times where I've parked in the same spot two nights in a row and it would be like in a place where I felt kind of out of, you know, out of the way, but every night I'm in a new spot. Uh, for me, hospitals have always been safe and never get bothered. Yeah, that's a good one. There's a mobile Starlink now, so you can have cell service anywhere with Northern exposure. So Karen, I've, I've seen all the people getting the Starlinks and stuff. Um, but I heard you have to put it outside and point it to the sky. Like for me, I don't, I don't like to get out of my van a lot. Like there, there's many a time where I'm at a park or at, outside of a Starbucks or outside of a Walmart and I'm just in my van. So I wouldn't want to put it outside and either somebody steal it or just be like super noticeable. Like you're just sitting there with your Starlink, you know, aimed up at the sky. So I have to do a little more research cause I could be, I could be wrong on that. But the videos that I've seen, you have to, you know, put it outside um wait would wouldn't you have to lift the hood to get to that oh the catalytic converter i don't know i don't know anything about that um yeah i watched a youtube video about how bad the stealing of catalytic converters are yes um even if you have something better to do play a youtube video in the background while doing something else that's a very good very good tip jane jane um i pop on daily better than commercial public tv awesome um, hey, Phil, how are you? But yes, exactly right. Or a remote control light where you have on and off switch. Now that one might, might be good. A.D. Jackson, Tim Ward sent you. Ah, awesome. Tim's Tim's awesome. He's a great dude. And if you guys don't know who Tim Ward is, he was on this live stream a few weeks back. And this is a little side note. If you guys hadn't heard, I posted a message on the community board and also on my Instagram that I have a new podcast. Uh, it's called Noble Nomads, and it's with me, Tim Ward, and Drew Fant from No Can't Fant. And we're talking about all things nomadic, and we're going to have some really good topics. Uh, it's going to be out every Tuesday on the no Noble Nomads YouTube channel, and then wherever all the podcasts you can find everywhere on everywhere. Um, so this coming week's going to be just an introduction of who we are and how we got started in nomad life. And the next week's going to be talking about how to find love on the road. And that's, we already recorded it and it's pretty funny and juicy. So <laughs> if you haven't already, go to the Noble Nomads YouTube channel and subscribe. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Casinos have great buffets. I mean, that's, that's a good reason to park there too. People always are benefited by your content. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, any Texas in the Centerville area, Texans in the Centerville area, another extremely dangerous felon escaped and on the loose. Oh boy. Uh, no, they can get under your vehicle. Oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. Hey, Cheryl, how are you? Yes, Hope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Hey, Gina's in the house. Hey, Gina, how are you? Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Hope. Thank you. Um, where's my chicken? Great content and great highlights in the hair. Thank you so much. I haven't had my hair done in a while. So thank you for the compliment. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to talk about a couple things and then we have a mystery guest coming pretty soon. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to be good because uh, I haven't really talked to this mystery guest very much. So it's going to be new for all of us and I'm very excited to have this conversation. Um, so like I said, we're going to be doing these live streams every Friday and we'll probably stick to this time for now. Um, but as I said before, I'm going to try to pop in on some other times. Um, so have your notification bell on because I'm, I'm really trying to just get to the point where I just live stream at certain times just to like show you guys where I'm at. Um, 
and that'll cut down on a lot of editing time because if I just show you where I'm at live, that's easier. Um, okay, so this is one really weird thing that's happened to me over the last couple, I'd say the last week. I started to smell cigarette smoke. So I was parked in like, I forget, a Ross or, you know, TJ Maxx or some, I don't know, a parking lot. And so I was like, what the heck? Who is parked next to me smoking a cigarette? And I think cigarette smoke smells disgusting. So I looked out and there was literally no cars around me. And I'm like, what the heck? And so, you know, my day went on and I, you know, went to another area to go. I think I went to a hotel to park for the night and I was still smelling it. So I was like, what's happening in my van? Is there something going on? And I have the little like Glade plug in. So I smelled it and up close it smelled good. Um, I put it back in the wall and I still smell cigarette smoke. And so for the past week, I've been smelling cigarette smoke. And so what I found out is I Googled, I'm not a doctor, but I'm just, I'm just telling you what I think. And I found out that, uh, that's something called phantosmia, phantosmia. I feel like I just get all the things I, every, everything my body would just likes to experience all the things. I'm like, you don't have to experience everything, but I guess I do. So um, it, it can happen when you're, when you have a damage to your nose or nasal passage. Um, and what it is, is it's like a, a, a smell hallucination. It, it's like your brain, like where the, where your brain is right here, I guess. I guess it's like phantom smells. And usually it's like a terrible smell, like cigarette smoke or poop or whatever. Um, and then I did kept going reading and a lot of it can happen if you've had COVID, which you know I did. And it like damages something. So it's, and it said it can even come on months after that, which I've, you know, that was a long time ago. That was back in December that I had it. So I think that's what's happening. And they said that you could try like, um, like, you know, nasal sprays or, or like, <clears throat> like a, not even a nasal spray with medicine, but just like saline. Um, and also it could, it happen if you have like a nasal a sinus infection or bad allergies or something like that. Um, so has anybody else experienced this? Cause I experienced a lot of hair loss, which praise God, it's slowing down now. Like I, my hair is still falling out, but not as, as clumpy as it was. Um, but I'm telling you, I get all the side effects. Um, so I'm smelling cigarette smoke all the time now, and it's disgusting. I also heard another way to kind of repair is to like get um, strong smelling essential oils or like coffee grounds or lemons or whatever, and hold up to your nose and take a whiff for like 20 seconds. And like, think of a memory that connects you with that smell so your brain can latch onto it and go, oh, it's supposed to smell like this, not smoke or this or whatever. Um, so you're like retraining and this could take months. You're retraining your brain to let your nose know of these specific things. This is how it's supposed to smell. And that's probably why my taste buds haven't been on hundred percent because that all affects the whole situation. So I just wanted to share that with you in case you're going through that. Um, and also if this doesn't get better, like in another week, I think I'm going to just contact my doctor and just let them know so that they can um, just know what's going on because also, and I'm not speaking this over myself, but I'm saying you could also, this could happen if you have some kind of brain problem, brain tumor, brain, whatever. Um, so it's definitely something to keep in mind. If you have this always, you know, don't take it for granted or don't take it lightly. I should say, um, and let me tell you guys one more thing and then we're going to bring on our mystery guest. So mystery guest, if you're here, you can use the link I gave you. Um, let's see. Can't wait to listen to you, your podcast, Great News. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Can you hear loud noise when a uh, catalytic converter is gone? I'm not sure. Question for later. Allison, will your podcast be on Google? It's It will, Gina. Um, I already, I already um, sent it out to all the podcast places including Google, but, um, Apple and Google take longer to process it or whatever. Um, right now it's on Stitcher premium, not Stitcher premium, Stitcher, um, Spotify and some other ones, uh, but it will be on Google podcasts. 
Yeah, I hate cigarette smoke as well. Awesome. Yeah, cigarette smell is better than smelling poop all the time. It's the same as walking into a spider web and you feel the spider crawling on you for days. Yeah, that's terrible. I had that happen to me after being sick in 2018. Okay, yeah, yeah, it can happen not just with COVID, but it can happen with other like colds and stuff like that. Hey, Amy, I can't stand the smell of perfume. Oh, interesting. Oh, Vicks Vapor Rub? I'm going to get that probably tonight then, Thomas, because I don't have any of that. Okay, awesome, awesome. They say when you have had COVID, a lot of stuff happens to you. My husband's brother constantly has a cough now. Oh, I had a cough for a long time. I still have phlegm and, and like it messes with my throat and stuff. Um, but my cough finally went away. Uh, yes, during a time when I was nutritionally defi deficient with calcium and had hair loss, cigarette smoke, smell occasionally, but not frequently. Oh, interesting. It makes total sense. I learned that you have to burn a whole orange on the flame the strong smell rewires your olfactory. Oh, oh, interesting. If I can get around a flame, I'm going to do that. I saw that on TikTok and I forgot about that. Oh, great. Another COVID side effect. I'm already losing my hair. Cheryl, hang in there. Hang in there. There's one step, one step and then another step. I also had it occur when I've had sinus infection. Okay. Yeah. So it can be for all kinds of reasons. Cigarette smell is terrible. I quit smoking 10 years ago and it drives me crazy, especially when it's the phantom smell, but it's happened Long enough, I know, when it's just the phantom smell usually. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> when you're A-sharp, can you be flat at the same time? That's funny. You know, I like a good pun. Um, COVID has such bad side effects. It sure does. It sucks. Um, okay. Um, let me just check my messages real quick to check in on my uh, mystery guest. See if there's any updates. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Um, okay, so the other thing, the last thing I want to talk to you guys about before I bring on our mystery guest is I was in Fort Collins, Colorado for quite a while, for at least a week. I think I've stayed in every hotel parking lot there, honestly. Um, but there's a place called the Silver, Silver Grill Cafe, and they're known for their cinnamon rolls. Uh, I did take some footage. I don't know if I'll make a video or not, but we'll see. Um, oh, I see my mystery guest popped in. I'm not going to show who it is yet, but whoop, whoop. Um, so they're, I think they've been in business since 1933. So if you get to the Fort Collins area, you've got to go to this place, Silver Grill Cafe. They're known for their cinnamon rolls. So they have these giant cinnamon rolls. Like they're kind of like in a rectangle. Then they have regular cinnamon rolls and then a pecan cinnamon roll. And it's just like the whole top is like a pecan. It's just like, it's not just a sprinkle. It's like full on pecans. I'm telling you, it was so good. It wasn't like the fake sweetsy, like weird frosting. It was like so mild and, and delicious and it was warm and you just so good and then they had this drink called the cafe royale it was like two shots of espresso I actually don't even know it was like all these other things like a sweet thing and they asked if i wanted it hot or iced and i was like iced of course so i'm thinking they're gonna bring it to me in this you know like a, like i don't know like a, a glass just as you would with ice like if you got an iced tea and they bring it to me in a cappuccino cup you know like the the, the like the bowl you know and i'm just like I mean, I see where you're going with this because it's called the Cafe Royale. I think they were trying to be fancy. But when it's an iced coffee, it's weird. So that was like something that I was like, I mean, I get it, but maybe you could just use regular glass. And and it said on the menu that it has a, a twist of lemon. I've never had a lemon in my coffee. So I was like, well, I'm definitely going to try this. So it already had, I guess, a lemon um, something in it but they come with like a little lemon wedge on the drink so you can like squirt it in there. And then I did it and I twirled it around and I drank it and it really popped out those flavors. It was really good. It was also very um, espresso-y. So I was feeling like a little jittery even after I drank half of it. Um, and then I got uh, eggs and hash browns. Like I just got their two eggs, regular breakfast. 
um, and then ordered a little, oh, I ordered the half size of the cinnamon roll because, or the, yeah, the pecan roll, because the other one was so big. I was like, okay, you don't need that. That's too much. Um, so it was delicious. That's the picture I posted on the community tab. If you haven't seen it, you should go check it out because it was so good. Um, uh, put that on your list. If you're going to, to, to like Northern Colorado, put that on your list. It was delicious. Um, so those are two things that I'd never tried before that I've tried now. Um, let's see. I wonder if I can. Let's see here. Amy, I'm in Kearney, Nebraska. To correct hair loss, I take 10K of biotin and drink orgain, not uh, nutritional drinks. Works. Oh, that's awesome. Um, are those the giant cinnamon rolls? They're not giant in this like height, but they're they're pretty big. They're pretty. They're. I'm trying to see. Yeah, they're they're like this big. It's huge. So I even as half of one, I could only eat half of the half. Uh, because it was very sweet and delicious. And I had the other half the next day. Um, now you were talking to me food. Definitely love the cinnamon rolls, cinnamon rolls with pecans, um, or pecans truckers and nomads sometimes use pecans. Yes, that's true. Never smoked, but I don't know whether COVID affected my already bald head. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Deb G's in the house. Um, Sorry, Terry's tenacious. It was delicious. Pecan roll sounds delicious right now. It was. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so we're already about 36 minutes in. I was going to take you guys outside real quick, but I don't know how to turn this camera around. Unless I just, yeah, let's see. I don't know if I can. I'll just show you outside real quick. And then I'll bring on our guest. I'm gonna lock myself out. Ah! Whoa. So I'm just at like a regular park. And it's really beautiful. So, like I said, there wasn't, um, there wasn't like a table and chair, so, oh, look, a receipt. So, I don't have anywhere to set this if I go out there. So, let me try to set this back up how it was before. <laughs> Whoa. nice out there okay that was a quick that was a real quick field trip but I just want to show you because oh man I didn't show you the bunny oh he's actually gone I think yeah I don't see the bunny anymore um yeah it's a very beautiful little park right here okay let me just read these last little comments and then we're gonna bring the mystery guy Cinnabon, yes. If you like history, you are close to Santa Fe, Oregon Trail. In some areas, you can still see ruts. Oh, interesting. Uh, yes, I used to go to a restaurant that made those big as the plate. Yes. Hey, Reverend RV, how are you? Yes. Um, let's see. Testosterone will also make your hair fall out, and that's why most guys go bald. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, it's a very beautiful park. By the way, thanks for the driving video through Snowy Use. I'm at awesome. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. Nebraska is flat. The, the parts that I've seen so far, there's no mountains I haven't seen. Um, I thought it was beautiful because I don't get to see that often. Why is the title of the live stream sleeping in a car in another country? Good question. And that's what we're going to get to next when I bring on my mystery guest. North, North Central Nebraska has the beautiful Nebraska Scenic River and great cinnamon rolls as well. My side hustle. 
escape artist. That sounds delicious. My driveway is brand friendly as well. Awesome. Okay. Um, let's see another wise way of eating. I wouldn't have your self-control. <laughs> I try to have self-control. I, I do, but sometimes I don't, I don't. Um, awesome. 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 Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. So we're going to bring on the mystery guest and today's mystery guest is someone you guys all know and love. And it's going to be a surprise to you because you didn't know. And we pulled one over on you. And the mystery guest is someone that was on the first time we tried this and it's our very own lovely Tracy Weeks. Woo! Let me push this button. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> hello. That was some hey. intro. <laughs> let, me, let me pop this down a little bit so I can see you better. There we go. Looking all right, Nico. Yes. Let me turn. Let me see if I can turn you up a little bit. Do you have a little a button that you can push um, where it says? Uh, you see where at the bottom it says mute and there's like a little up arrow? Yeah. There's a little thing at the bottom and you turn it off and then it'll let you adjust your volume up a little bit. I think it's... How's that? If you turn off auto adjust and then turn yeah. it up. Yeah. Yep. How's that? Does that sound better? Yeah, it's a little better. Yeah. Okay. That's perfect. better? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Hey, everyone. Yay. So excited to be here. Welcome, Tracy. Welcome, Tracy. <laughs> Tracy. She was on our, like, the first time we tried this little, like, melon setup. And it was just like an impromptu thing. So I knew I wanted to have Tracy on another time. So I've just been kind of, like, waiting to, like, work out some of the bugs, which still we haven't worked out. But Tracy reached out, and she was willing to come back on, even though I haven't gotten my stuff <laughs> together. So... <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being here you're welcome thank you for having me on it's just so great and um i was like so excited just to talk about my trip because first of all thank you for the channel because without that i would never have done what i did and i would have just been a mess so oh, I, you're, such, you're such a blessing you know and i know there's probably people coming on and they'll, you know, benefit from it as well. I mean, I live in a house. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I've been blessed that I've never had to be homeless. So, you know, um, I have occasionally thought of grabbing a camper van and going off, but, you know, it's one of those things. So when I saw your channel, it was just information purposes and then of course i loved you so you know <laughs> love it love it love it i'm gonna take yeah. this out of the way a little bit so yeah so do you want me to just to launch in and yeah so um let's see i made a couple little notes good um, <laughs> i've made some notes too <laughs> so maybe just like briefly so that you know people will just just uh, briefly tell everybody who you are where you live um, you know, just a real brief introduction so they know who you are. All right. So first of all, if anyone can't understand my accent, I apologize. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I went to San Antonio, I had a few shopkeepers look at me as though I was speaking Swahili. They were like, what are you saying? So yeah, I apologize in advance. So I am from New Zealand, and I immigrated to um, Australia 15 years ago. I live in the beautiful state of Victoria, in the city of Melbourne. The city of Melbourne is one of the most locked down cities, excluding Shanghai, <laughs> one of the most locked down cities in the world. So not just Australia, in the world. So you can imagine how crazy we all went. Um, I live alone. So my house was very quiet. I um, uh, used to go back to New Zealand every year and see my family and my friends. And, you know, so traveling between the two countries was not a problem. I love Australia. Um, I came here because New Zealand is way small um, and very expensive. So... Just to give you an idea, when I went back this time, it was hugely expensive. 
Petrol was, and I've converted this, was $7.54 per gallon USD. <laughs> that was a little bit of a shock, you oh know, that was huge. Um, uh, milk for 2.11 quarts was $3.13 USD. Now, that's hugely expensive as well. Compared to Australia, that's... Yeah way off the charts so um that was that was like a part of the reason why i came over like 15 years ago it was expensive um whereas australia is much better so um i run a friend's business and i import um admixture for permeable concrete which is really interesting because this concrete goes around trees and on driveways in the water soak straight through to the bottom into the ground so you don't get the pooling of the water on top of your driveway um i import that from america bag it up and i get it delivered so it's really interesting i really enjoy yeah. that um and uh yeah so that's a little bit of what i do um and so i my mixture of accent is kiwi and partly australian so yeah <laughs> Because I picked a little bit up from living here, but going back to New Zealand, I refresh my accent. So the Australians suddenly go, oh, you're a Kiwi. As <laughs> soon so, as I say jandals, they, they know I'm not Australian. <laughs> so, so is a Kiwi somebody that's from New Zealand? Yes. So Kiwi is several things. So a Kiwi is someone who's from New Zealand. It is also a fruit that's got everyone calls them well we call them kiwi fruit um and it is also our national bird which is flightless brown no wings um a big long beak and it comes out at night so it's, it's a little bit of a useless thing because it doesn't do anything. and the it, it because it's not it doesn't fly it gets killed by the cats and dog well you know wildlife like that gets killed so it's not very interesting yeah. Um, and, oh, and the other reason why I left, uh, uh, I enjoyed enjoy New Zealand, uh, part of the reason why I like to go back is just to get a break from being scared of the bugs and the spiders and the snakes and, you know, the things that can kill you. <laughs> yeah. Australia has them all. And, yeah, so, that, you know, I don't try not to think about it, but if I get a great big spider come in my house, it's not nice. <laughs> yeah, that's just yeah that's true like ha having all the those little worries you're like i'm out of here yeah i get out pretty quick i have phobias so anything like that i vacate my house and will just find someone a perfect stranger even you know i'll be crying hysterical i'll be a mess so people will help <laughs> they think i'm being murdered instead of a bug <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, so one of the things that we talked about prior to this was you recently took a trip back to New Zealand. And do you want to just tell the story? Because I found it so interesting. And I didn't ask you specifically what happened because I wanted to hear it with everybody else at the same time. But you had mentioned that when you were back in New Zealand, some things transpired and you can go into as much detail or as little as you feel comfortable but some things transpired that that landed you in your car and that's why i titled this you know sleeping in your car in another country because it's interesting to me because i've only slept in my vehicle in the us where i you know i know pretty much most of the laws and i'd feel comfortable but in another country you have that thing hanging over your head like I wonder what's the rules here. Am I going to get put in jail? What's happening? So maybe talk about your experience and how it was for you sleeping in your car. Yeah, so it had been three years since I had gone back. I went back in March of 2019. Um, and, of course, the pandemic hit March 2020 and both Australia and New Zealand borders slammed shut. Um, the only way for me to have gone back to New Zealand then was to go back to live. There was no coming back and my house is here so you know so obviously i'm here um and uh that's you know 
until the borders opened again and our prime minister said we can come back, you know, and go backwards and forwards and not get stuck because a lot of people got stuck in the countries, you know. And uh, so, yeah, so it'd been three years. Um, my my granddaughter uh, was turning five. So when I saw her last, she was two. So we FaceTimed, but it's totally different. So I... Um, yeah, I was so excited to go back to New Zealand. I was just like crying and, you know. Um, now, I had taken a few things with me just because my granddaughter wanted to, uh, you know, do picnics and stuff. <laughs> so I got these, and I'm so excited about these. So I got these Ooh. little containers. Oh, nice. And they flipped out. And then they fold back in and they come with a lid, which is actually liquid proof when this button is down. So you can actually put anything in there. I've got that size and I've also got one that's that size. I so love it. I love right. collapsible things. I love these things. I have only just discovered them. So I thought I've got to bring them on just to show you. So I actually took these to New Zealand and I also took a little picnic set that had uh, plates and, you know, a few other things. Um, and I also had this, which was a knife, fork and spoon and a thing. Like a, yeah, like nests into to each other. Yeah, nests in there. So if you don't have any water at the time and you want to, you use them and to clean them, then you just sort of stick them back into its little thingy and uh, off you go. So oh, that's smart. So I had taken those for our little picnics just as I, I'll chuck these in. I recommend anyone traveling overseas, if you can, chuck some of those things in just in case. You just never know. Right, so I get over there and the household is chaotic. <laughs> Bearing in mind that for the last two and a half years, I had seen two people in my bubble Oh my God. We hadn't been able to travel much further than 5Ks in our lockdown. We had curfew of 9 p.m. So we had tough lockdowns, right? So I'm in a quiet house, no people, hadn't seen many people, and all of a sudden I'm going into New Zealand, <laughs> into a household with three undisciplined dogs, a child, and three other adults. <laughs> You're like, ah. So I got to the end of week one and I was a mess. I just so tired and I was just sitting there going, I need to get away. I just, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, now, I, I, I put some populations out just so that you get an idea as well of the size of the place that I'm staying at. So Melbourne has a population of 5 million and 61,000 people. Where I ended up is Huntley and it has 8,760 people. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I'm in a little tiny place. I don't know if there's a place in America that's comparable to that. <laughs> Where I'm actually from in New Zealand is Hamilton, and that's 165,000 people. Oh, okay. So that's that's our nearest biggest city. Um, now Australia is uh, Melbourne. No, sorry, Victoria, the state I live in, has 6.7 million people. New Zealand's population is only 4,894,859 people. So you can fit um, <laughs> the population of New Zealand one and a half times into Melbourne, it's into Victoria, the state. So that's the comparison of oh where God. I live and where I was going back to. So Huntley, little tiny place, you know, 8,000 people. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a little bit different over there as well with the houses. Most houses are like on the front of the section and they don't have big fences. Mm -hmm. So to actually find a place to park, I 
I brought up your video. <laughs> I got in my car, I put in my things, I went to the supermarket, I picked up some tins of creamed rice, I bought a can opener, um, I bought some fresh fruit, I bought some snacks, which for me was some crackers and peanut butter Yum. and potato chips. Um, you know, I bought those sort of things, or apart from the fat fruit, but most of the things I bought were so I could keep them in the boot of my car with my handy dandy in or in my containers and actually be able to just go and park somewhere and have peace and quiet and just knit and watch youtube videos yeah um and so huntley is on a river so that was actually nice as far as being able to go and sit and look and just have some peace and downtime and watch the birds on the river and all that uh but at that point where I got emotional and hopped in my car, I sort of was thinking, but I parked at the thing, I brought up your video and I watched that first, you know, I live in my car and this is how I do it. Um, and I was like, made a list of, right, that's it. <laughs> and then I, um, yeah, I, I just watched that. I scouted around for places of where I could possibly park. Um, I couldn't cover my windows, but I wasn't too worried. I mean, it was a very small city, very yeah. small town. Um, and although they do have a reasonable crime level, it's not, yeah, it's probably the same as anywhere. You just yeah. got to be on your guard and yeah. you just pray and you leave it in the hands of the Lord and you just Amen. go, I'm doing it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, the, the first night I parked in my car, I didn't have a very good sleep because I completely blanked the uh, good tip of finding a flat place and I was on a, a leaning. Yeah, oh, I know that very well. <laughs> I woke up in the morning and I'm like, oh that just that wasn't good what a, like, I don't know if I can do this and then I watched the video again and went, oh. <laughs> Oh, okay, I gotta go and find a flat. You got it, you got it, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I did that probably about three or four times. I would just hop in the car, make sure I had all my stuff. I'd go to the supermarket if I had to, you know, buy anything fresh. Um, and I uh, I also um I knit, so behind me uh, there. You can see a blanket. Yeah. I'm knitting one for my granddaughter. So I actually had that in a knitting bag. And it was also it was such a comfortable pillow. <laughs> so that was my pillow. I um, It was fairly warm over there. So I was lucky it was actually still summery. It was still hot, which for New Zealand was unusual, but very thankful because I didn't actually need a blanket in the car. I didn't get that cold. I just had a sweatshirt and I put it like a jacket down by my feet and yeah I'm five foot one so I'm only little so the car, <laughs> back of the car is just on its own I can lay out and just put my feet just a little bit over the edge so that was really good um the one thing that I did find obviously was um a good thing to scout out and i should have done that um as well first is scout out where the nearest toilets are and try not to park too far away so that you don't have to go in nature i mean right if you have to go in nature you have to go i mean <laughs> i think there was one time i must have had too many snacks and too many drinks with my snacks at you know, watching the YouTube oh, okay. <laughs> in the middle of the night, and I was like, "Yeah, I could not drive to the, <laughs> the toilet." So I was just like, "Out the car in nature, never mind." I mean, that's the beauty. Do what you of, do. <laughs> and it's a beauty of New Zealand. You know, nothing's going to bite you or yeah. attack you while you're in that position. But <laughs> that was one thing I thought to myself: next time, if I'm ever in a city that I don't know is just find where your nearest public convenience is. Yes. It's good to be able to get water out of the tap, you know, just it's good to be there. I mean, I would wake up in the morning, I'd be able to drive to the public convenience, I could have a wash, I had, you know, 
Um, and then I could go and get breakfast and, you know, just yes. the day with, with the quietness and the prayer and the, you know, the cup of tea and the yummy. <laughs> um, I didn't do it for a long time. Like, as I say, it was sort of probably over the three week period. I did it about four times. Um, I did it a lot during the day, like, you know, I forgot that thing, but actually going out and saying, oh, I'm going to see a friend and driving off and doing my own thing and then sleeping the night and going back later on. <laughs> was oh, so did your, did your family not know that you were doing that? No, well, you know, I mean, my family were lovely and I could not explain to them what I was feeling because right. everyone's had lockdowns. Yeah. throughout the world it yeah. i mean this pandemic is just mind-blowing you know um so everyone's had it hard but to explain to someone in new zealand who at the height like i i landed when they just started the omicron explosion um and they were only having in huntley 100 people a day for instance, you know, whereas I'm from a land where still right here and now we've got 15,000 in Melbourne per day. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, to try and explain to them that, hey, I've been locked down a lot more than you, because I'll go, oh, yeah, we got locked down, and I'll be like, <laughs> on the head. <laughs> it was, it, I tried not to be exasperated. I prayed a lot about that because you don't want to, be condescending you don't right. want to be like that to your family um but to try and explain to them i've been locked down for you know so long and had quiet in my house for so long that coming into this is so bad so yeah. i didn't want to make them feel bad by going right. I'm, I'm gonna go and sleep in my I car go. I'm, I'm just gonna go and live in my car for 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 a day and night you know <laughs> They would have been horrified. They would have been like, no, you know. Most people are horrified when you go, oh, I slept in my car. They're like, oh, that's no, they can't understand it. No, they can't understand it. <laughs> but I didn't it. want to go and get, uh, 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 I didn't want to drive into Hamilton and pay money for accommodation. Um, but the other places I could have gone all had the same thing. Lots of people in their house. And it was, uh, I just need to be quiet. <laughs> Yeah. So, so um, yeah, so although New Zealand is familiar to me, after three years, I felt like a stranger oh. in a strange country, you know, yeah. because it's just it, too long and too much has happened. Um, so, yeah, so that's why I thought I'd come on and talk about it just because although it's familiar, it, it, it was it was like I landed somewhere in the States that I've never been, and I don't know anyone, and I basically just went and slept with my car. <laughs> yeah, because things, like, you know, things are moving all the time, you know, and, and if, you're, if you're not there, then when you go back, like, I've noticed even when I go visit my parents, things change around there too. It's like, whoa, they got a new this or a new that, or just like, there's lots of stuff happens, so, you know. Exactly, and I think too, when you travel, um, you have a thing as well of you've broadened your your outlook in life has broadened more so than the people that have stayed like the, my family in New Zealand. Not much has changed for them. Not yeah. much changed because they weren't greatly affected, you know. Um, they had lockdowns, but the biggest thing they had was just their border was shut. No, we can go back there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and still is for the rest of the world. I mean, until July, apparently, most of the world can't go. So. Yeah. I'm seeing so, a lot yeah. of comments here. Um, <clears throat> Reverend, <clears throat> excuse me, Reverend RV says, 5'1", how? I'm 6'5". 6'5", <laughs> six, five. <laughs> six, five, that's, that'd be a tough one. Um, that's tall. <laughs> yeah. Hot Tiger says, as an Uber driver, food delivery person, I always have to go in nature since COVID, most places closed and still close early as of right now. So I go Victorian style. That's true. Yeah. Even traveling around some of the places, they have signs that the bathrooms are the restrooms are closed. You can't, you know, even as a customer, they, you know, I think they have short staff, they're short, short staffed, so they don't have enough people to keep 
rotating to clean those restrooms so they don't have them open as much. So yeah. that's true. Um, Phil Leo says, I'm surprised IHOP doesn't have a bunny or a kangaroo as a mascot. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. We don't have um, IHOP over here, so just say. <laughs> you, you don't or you do? No, we oh. don't. Um, Linda says, how how are you? Can't wait to meet you in Quartzsite, Arizona next season. Just starting my journey. Et cetera. Awesome. 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 Um, let's see. Definitely. Phil says, uh, COVID has been brutal for the restroom. Definitely. Um, let's see. I had a hard time being around people after short lockdown in the States. That's true, Sage. I think if, if you were by yourself, you know, and even being in the van, it's like, it's a, it's a weird feeling because it's like you want to be around people because it's lonesome, but you also, when you get around a big group of people, it's all, it's like shocking. Your brain is like buzzing yeah. and you're like, I, I got to step out. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's a weird feeling, you know? And um, I think it's good to ease in with like, even if you can just meet up with one person or maybe two people and have a quiet, you know, sit on the patio or at a fireplace or something calm until so you can like work back into like a, you know, a more festive environment because it can be very overwhelming, you know? Yeah, well, one thing when I came back, because I realized that I thought I had been so isolated and I don't even know what I used to do prior to COVID. I, I used to go out, that's all I knew. Uh, so I've actually joined, we have meetups here. It's a, uh, uh, Appy thing. Um, so I went on and I found some a group and I've been going for the last few weeks. So like sitting in a mm -hmm. restaurant, you've got 20 people and then you've got people around you. So just to acclimatize myself back to noise, because that that's what had happened. It was the noise level was yeah, it was charged, you know. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah. Hey Nelson, how are you? Um Phil says, unfortunately, besides the COVID, uh, the fentanyl epidemic with addicts taking up a long time in restrooms, um, restaurants have really cracked down on bathrooms. I think there's a lot of reasons why there's, you know, the bathroom shortage as well. Um, Adriana says, and when you're in Australia, you are an immigrant. And when you go back to your country, now you're a tourist. I feel the same. We don't actually have a country. So Adriana yeah. is from Uruguay, but she's here in America. So that i've never experienced that but that's definitely got to feel like maybe you don't have like a place to just be like this is me this is mine so is that how you kind of feel yeah no she's she's hit that right on the head that's exactly how i felt and it was very unsettling because i've never felt like a tourist in my own country you know um so yeah it was very unsettling um coming back though and just coming back to my house and where things are and i mean as i say i love australia obviously um so that grounded me back and then i went how can i make it well first of all don't have a pandemic would be helpful um <laughs> because yeah. uh, but i'm actually going back in september so that's why i'm trying to acclimatize myself to more people um just so that it doesn't bombard me like that but yeah it really unsettling to be a tourist in your own country you know, yeah i think that's a great way to like um it's a really good tip for people um is to to go on places like the meetup um do you, you have it's meetup you have the app um yeah it's yeah you just uh type it in google i don't know if it's yeah. around the world but definitely in australia but yeah just type in meetups yeah. and it brings up a whole list of groups so you just got to find what or you know search what your interests are uh yeah. i joined the drunken nitwits so <laughs> <laughs> I love because it. So we meet in a bar and we do our knitting or crocheting or whatever and drinking. <laughs> yeah, obviously we don't all get drunk, but you know, uh, yeah, if you're not driving, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, we have we have meetup.com. It's also an app and um, oh good, yeah, yeah, we have that app, the app. Um, there's also like a, a lot of things that even if you're a nomad, there's the app called Seeker. Um, you could even go on, um, you know, the dating app called Bumble. They have a, a thing you can click over and it's Bumble BFF. So it's like a way to meet friends. You know, like if I want to meet like ladies that are friends, uh, you can do that too. Um, and it's really important to, to connect with other people. 
just, you know, like you said, to acclimate yourself back, but also just so that you're not isolating because we've been, you know, in various stages, everybody in lockdowns of whatever um, capacity. And it's really difficult to put yourself back out there, you know? So I think it's, it's really, it's really good that you're doing that because like you said, if it, if it continues, you, you just isolate even more and get, can get depressed. So. Well, I mean, I, I, prior to the pandemic, I suffered from social anxiety, but I never let it get the better of me, you know, yeah. um, but that is also something I found this time is I joined the group and then I had an, a panic attack trying to click the RSVP to actually go. And oh. I went, now there's a problem. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, so I just bit the bullet and went, I'm scared, but you've got to do it anyway. Yeah, you know? good for you. Yeah. Good. Um, Gina says extra, extroverts really suffered during the COVID at the height of the restrictions. That's true. Um, I think for ex extroverts, that's got to be very difficult. If you're used to, you know, circling around a lot of people, that's got to be very hard. Um, Terry's tenacious says, I really wondered where they thought people would go to the bathroom, made it more impossible. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is so true. Ooh, um, exactly. I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Sage says, you find out how much you like yourself being alone. That's true. I do like myself and I like being alone, but also, man, it's nice to be around other people at times as well. Um, another thing about being an Uber driver People have always been in my car, but now they are allowed in the front seat again. I want my space in the front of my car. Oh, that's true. I never thought about that. That's That would be difficult because I would want, I kind of want my little space if I drove and then someone to be behind. I don't, I don't know that I want someone like in my front section here. No. Um, yes, YouTube friends are great. Uh, let's see, finding out you don't need a lot of stuff. That's true. Um, Cheryl says, I'm lucky because here in Texas, we have been living normally for over a year. That's true. Yeah. Texas has pretty, been pretty, you know, just like whatever. Um, Hey, what it do DG? Danette's in the house. Whoop, whoop. Uh, Danette is another one of my nomad friends. So go follow her channel as well. Um, <laughs> Sage, I found out I don't like people as much as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because I've, I've said that as well like sometimes i'm like oh my god people suck they don't like they do but they don't but i find that i still want to be around people i still want like to be next to somebody and like talking and having a coffee or for you know for like you said a tea or like just basic it's it's so nice to just connect with good people you know yeah and i i mean i i think that's important to remember um especially now that we are trying to live normally you know i mean i i went to new zealand i've been to a concert um mm -hmm. you know uh, that was interesting um but yeah i i find all those things really weird yeah because of that you know uh yeah so i think we, it's important to actually go and do things and make sure we do connect with people and not just through the screen as well you know although i mean it's nice like having your lives i love tuning in yeah. when i can you know it makes me feel like oh there's a whole group of people that actually like me you know yes yes yes, yes we do we do we do <laughs> um okay i'm gonna read these last few comments and then we're gonna play two rounds of would you rather so yes, yes. so i wrote down two little questions that we can we can do and I think that'd be fun. I um, love. Cheryl says, I was an essential worker, so that saved my sanity during the lockdowns. I'm very thankful. But, ooh, thank you for being an essential worker. And also, thank I think you. that's is a good way to, to get through that time is to be around other people. Um, <laughs> Hot Tiger. Oh, that's how you meet other women on Bumble. I thought I needed another app. You don't. Um, you just go on like this this little, I don't know, go, go look it up on Google. But you just... Go to the section and you can click um, BFFs instead of dating. Um, Gina says, Ohio permitted realtors to be essential, but Michigan didn't. Oh, interesting. I did not know that. Um, if you want to live in lockdown, you live in a blue state. I never had any mandates in Texas. Oh, interesting. Um, Terry says, I love people. Hey, Ladybug. The older I get, the less I want to be around anyone. I want to move out to the Mojave Desert in the middle of nowhere. Oh, my gosh. 
I think in the past, I used to think like this, like where I, I'm like, oh, I just go live in the cabin in the woods. But I'm I'm feeling the opposite. Like the, the older I get, the more companionship I, I crave. Um, not big groups. I don't like be, being in big groups. But I do crave just like having that connection where you can call a friend and be like, hey, let's just go grab a coffee and just chit chat or like have a brunch or like take a little walk or something. So everyone's so different, but that's something that I personally crave is just like that connection. Um, okay. Awesome. Uh, everyone's saying that you're awesome, which you are. Oh, thank you. Thank you everyone. <laughs> uh, I was see. hoping I wasn't going to like talk so much that I bored everyone. <laughs> no, no, it's very interesting. Um, I like kids, dogs, and some adults. <laughs> As Sage says, I want to be around people, but then leave when I feel. I mean, that's actually perfect. Uh, Hope says, yes, me too, Allison. Okay, awesome. All right, so we're going to jump into these games. And let's see. Okay, so is everybody ready for games? Games, games, games. Yeah, I love games. Mm. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo, baby. Right, so <laughs> the first question <laughs> is... Would you rather, and Tracy, we're going to wait until everybody answers. I know you know this drill, but I just reminded everybody. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so we're going to ask this question. Would you rather have your eye color, have your eyes change colors by your mood, or would you rather have your ears twitch when there's danger around you? So your eyes would change colors with your mood. So that's more like people would know like what your moods are or your ears would t- twitch when there's danger around you. Which one would you guys rather? Okay, we're coming in hot with, okay, so uh, Phil, Rebecca, Sage, and CN, and Robbie, and Thomas, they all said they would want to have their ears twitch with the danger. And Terry Tenacious would want to have her have eye color with mood. Um, Phil says because of the ear twitch is for safety. Um, Linda Lover says ear twitching is a good superpower. Uh, Adriana <laughs> saying ear twitch. Hot tigers going with eye color change. It already happens to me. Ooh, interesting. Um, Grant says I co- I change colors because twitching would be annoying. I'm thinking my eyes would be permanently black. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, Adriana says like horses. Yes. Uh, Hope says I am too moody. Hope's eyes would be like just. Like, <laughs> 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 That's funny. That's that would be so such a weird thing to see somebody's eyes like go mm-hmm. from like, <laughs> like a total circle. Um, Kenneth says uh, twitch, ears twitch. Phil says tiger, your eyes might change colors because of danger. Oh, interesting. Um, Hope says love the black. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. Um, all right, Tracy, what do you think? What, what do you think you would choose on that one? Uh, with me, I definitely do the ears twitching because my eyes already change. Like you can tell whether I'm happy, sad, angry, apparently. So yes. ear twitching definitely. Awesome. Um, I'm with you on the ear twitching because um, I don't really care if people know my mood. Like you said, they'll know my mood if if you know if you want to pop off, they're gonna know my mood. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. but. <laughs> And, you know, living in a vehicle, I think that'd be such a cool thing is like, you know, if there's actual danger nearby and your ears twitch, you'd be like, oh, let me move to another spot because there's some danger around. Yeah, exactly. Time to leave. (laughs) Time to leave. Uh, Lunda Lover says, I like to hide my moods. And Terry's Tenacious says, my eyes would be like psychedelic. (laughs) Um, Safety first, yes. Uh, let's see. Susan says twitch. Uh, Grant says, how about eyes twitching and ears changing colors? Oh, that's, that would be interesting. Oh, yeah. That, that would, <laughs> if your ears changed colors, like, in, like, 
blue and green and all these weird colors, people would think that you have definitely something wrong with you. <laughs> definitely. Um, hey, Patricia, welcome. Um, all right, so this is the last question and then we're gonna wrap it up for the night. Um, so before we wrap it up, um, Tracy, it, is there anywhere that people can find you if they wanna connect or do you don't want anyone to connect with you? Um, yeah, not really. <laughs> That's what, it's funny because I never know if people want that or don't want that. So, I, I, no, I don't really have a channel. Um, I'm not really on Facebook. Um, so yeah, but um, uh, I mean, if yeah, they can connect with you in the I'm, chat on on uh, live streams. Well, I was gonna say, you know, if we're on chat and you actually do want to connect, I mean, you know. Yes. That's fine. I'll, I we can uh, we can do something then. Um, you know, Lovely. I have an email. I have email. If people want to email me, I suppose. Uh, yeah. I uh, don't know where I'd put that, but <laughs> that's fine. Like you said, if we're if you're in the live stream another day and they want to connect, they can they can hit you up. I want a YouTube channel, but I'm too scared to do one. <laughs> so oh, don't be scared. You'd have a you'd have a big audience because you have a great personality. Oh, thank you. Um, okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, Hope says, hey, by the way, I love the lives. Thank you, are so fun. Thank you very much, Hope. Um, Thank you. Let's see. Okay, awesome. So this is gonna be the last question. All right, this is a basic one. So would you rather go up in a hot air balloon or a helicopter ride? Like if they were doing like a, you know, like a nice day, you know, like a little, fun day would you rather go up in a hot air balloon or have like a, a tour in a helicopter so which one would you guys rather <laughs> tracy is fun hope said <laughs> tracy you're fun oh, um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, phil says phil says suppose on a date someone doesn't bring any spiders or snakes but frost coppers I don't know what that is no no fosters i don't know what that is oh fosters it's a it's a beer oh, oh, oh okay um robbie says happy early birthday for our number one mod mr grant oh when is grant's birthday i have it written down on my calendar but i can't look right now tomorrow oh tomorrow <laughs> yeah crap. which is my today because it's the 14th saturday the 14th over here 11 25 a.m in australia Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We should have, I should have just moved this to tomorrow. <laughs> I've been, I mean, for the last couple of days, so I've haven't been looking at my calendars and stuff. Um, okay. So we're getting all the answers coming in. So, uh, Robbie says helicopter. Um, Hey world Mundo. Um, Sage says helicopter. Uh, Oh, Robbie, you've flown a helicopter. That's interesting. Oh, um, Rebecca says she's done a helicopter, so now she'd rather do a balloon. Hope says she's going to stay on the ground. Um, <laughs> Lunda Lover says hot air balloon, so peaceful. Um, Sage says twitching in a helicopter. <laughs> uh, helicopter sounds more predictable, says Adriana. Um, Patricia says, oh, our beer here in Australia. Okay. Hot Tiger says hot air balloon. Planes make me sick. Never been in a balloon. Thomas says hot air balloon. Phil says don't trust hot air balloons. Been in a chopper with a female pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Helicopter. Uh, for Gina says hot air balloons scare me. Um, let's see. Helicopter for Kenneth. Helicopter because it would fall faster for Sia and that's terrifying. Oh. <laughs> Grant says helicopter because I want to. Um, and uh, Karen says I have a tethered ride and I've had a tethered ride in a balloon fun. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Um, Reverend RV, I'd rather go up in a hotter balloon because they are romantic. Oh, and Susan says helicopter. Um, yeah, let's let's uh, everybody say a collective happy birthday to Grant for his birthday tomorrow, since we won't be live tomorrow. So everybody say happy birthday, Grant. And while you guys are doing that, uh, maybe Tracy, you can reveal which one would you rather? 
All right. So first of all, happy birthday, Grant. Um, I'm deathly afraid of heights. So, but for the purposes of this game, <laughs> I would rather a hot air balloon. I, I, I don't know. I just think the helicopter would be too scary. So, hot air balloon. And they oh, are right. I think. I think. Yes. Um, I would probably go with, because I've never been either. So I would probably go with the hot air balloon. I've heard some horror stories with each one. So I guess, you know, either one can have a, a tragic end. But I'd say if you get like a good company, a hot air balloon would probably be more peaceful, like someone said, and just like floating and, you know, just like kind of being up in the clouds and maybe, you know, just kind of chilling out. I think a helicopter is a little more loud and bouncy. And I think I'd prefer like the more peaceful floating sensation. Yeah, so. and if you were ever to go up in either or, do not Google it. It's like Googling plane crashes when you're going to get up on an aeroplane. I would never hop on an aeroplane if I looked at all those plane crashes. Exactly. <laughs> and actually, exactly. I'm not as nice as you think because one time when I went back to New Zealand, I was seated next to a woman who had never gone to New Zealand, and she was like, I'm a bit worried about the landing. And I said, you should be a pilot actually <laughs> overshot the runway once and there's water at the end of the Auckland Airport runway. And that's true. Um, and <laughs> she went white. <laughs> oh, no. And, and with that, I just took her hand and went, you'll be fine. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Wee Kiwi. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> You're like, well, it is what it is. <laughs> It's all right. Don't worry about it. It's all right. It's, it's going to be fine. It's only the ocean. You get a nice swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. I love all the birthday wishes for Grant. Um, happy birthday, Grant. Uh, Grant is the greatest. Um, and I hope you have some big fun planned. Uh, and his wife, Jackie, just had a birthday too. So that's pretty exciting. Um, uh, Karen says, I love going to balloon festivals. I need to befriend a pilot. Yes. The balloon festivals are awesome. I've been, I have been to one of those. Yeah, me too. They do, they do them in New Zealand. Um, well, used to once a year, just amazing. Yes. Gina says extroverts need to know what the aircraft is doing. Floating feels out of control. Oh, interesting. I wouldn't have thought it that way. Um, Hope says my two sisters love the air balloon. Me and my other sister was on the ground. <laughs> Hope's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nope. Awesome. Well, this has been so much fun. I'm so glad we were able to do like a, a real full um, episode or live stream uh, because last time we only got like a couple minutes because we were just testing it out. So um, I think this was really um, a good topic and hopefully we'll get a lot of people on the replay that, you know, if you're if you are in a situation that you're just not that comfortable and you don't want to spend a lot of money, on getting a hotel or Airbnb, or you're just, you know, sometimes it's like last minute. You just got to get out of somewhere. Sleeping in a vehicle, as long as you are prepared enough and safe enough, I think it's a great idea. And I'm, I'm proud of you for giving it a try and, and just doing what you needed to do. Because sometimes it's, like you said, you just know when you got to get out of somewhere and you just got to do what you can for yourself, you know? Absolutely. And to know that you can do that confidently, you know, is part of it as well. You know, if you're, if you're prepared enough, and I mean, what, I had a few collapsible containers and really that was it, and then just equipped my car, the car out, you know, put the stuff in the boots so no one could see and it worked. It yeah. Cool. I, I mean, in fact, you know, next time I come over to America, I, I'm definitely, I haven't driven yet, but I'll definitely hire a car just so I have that, you know, option as well. Yeah. And I... I hope that whenever you do come to america we can meet up and that'd be cool <laughs> that would be cool yeah i'm hoping in the next couple of years to maybe nice. journey back awesome. it's been a while uh, i want to give a shout out to a couple of people that i missed because i hadn't been checking my messages but um gilberto sent three dollars uh through cash app so thank you gilberto <laughs> and Ooh. also susan sent ten dollars um and also um Oops, hold on one second. I lost my 
Um, there was another donation earlier this week from Patsy for fifteen dollars, and mm. looks like Robbie just came through with a uh, like we know the last minute twenty dollars and says whoop to Tracy Weeks and Allison and Grant and everyone here. I hope everyone has a safe, blessed, and awesome weekend. Whoop whoop. Yeah. Awesome. Whoop, whoop. Um. Oh, and let's see. And Tammy just sent twenty five dollars. Thank you, Tammy, so much. So I'm gonna give um a collective bunch of sounds since all this came in at once. Usually I do this individually. <laughs> um, but real quick before, um, Karen says you should check out the Albuquerque Balloon Fest in the fall. It's amazing. Hundreds of balloons. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, thank you, Sage, for being here. Um, everyone's saying fun to meet you, Tracy. Um, let's see. <laughs> Grant says, what about helicopter festivals? I don't know about that. Um, yes i love everybody here as well everyone's saying nice to meet you uh let me give the shout out i'm just going to give a bunch of different sounds and we're going to start with the hallelujah because all oh, that's a blessing thank you for the donations <laughs> well thank you everyone for the lovely messages and thank you for listening to me talk thank you for having me on Alison and thank you for your channel oh, I of just course. love being a snack packer <laughs> thank you so much thank you for coming on and just being such a great guest for the snack pack family and being so supportive you're always such a great light to the channel and it was just a pleasure to have you and it was just great to hear uh, all your wisdom and everything. So thank you so much. And I want to say thank you to everybody here. Um, if you haven't been told today or this week, you are loved. People do care about you. Uh, I hope that you guys have an excellent week. Um, stay tuned for more live streams and more videos. And that's it. Have an excellent week. And uh, Grant, have the best birthday ever tomorrow. And uh, we'll talk to you on the next one. Bye, guys. Bye for Bye. now. Thank you, Robbie, for the $5. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Bye. Awesome. Let's see.